And folks, we're going to jump over and talk to our man Teddy Cakestad as we do every Wednesday. And you can read Teddy's report, folks, the Tiger Forex report. He comes out with it every week on Monday mornings. He comes out with updates when warranted through the week. You head on over to the newsletter tab at TFNN. You can subscribe, folks. It's $97 a month. That comes with the money-back guarantee, folks. You subscribe for 30 days, you're unsatisfied, you don't use it, it just doesn't work with your trading style for whatever reason, you cancel, you get a money-back guarantee. When you sign up, you also gain access to a recent webinar Teddy did, 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, what is behind the Tiger Forex Report, uh, a great webinar Teddy did. When you sign up, you get the report for a month, you get the newsletter, you get the 60-minute uh, webinar, you can't go wrong, and boy, we got some action in currencies, we got some action in crude. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, we got a lot of action, Teddy. I can't help but say uh, what's going on in that crude market with the volatility we've been seeing. Where do you want to start as we chop around this morning? Uh, well, we can start with crude. Uh, obviously, they're they're banging the lows. They're, uh, the bears are very happy and the bulls are scratching their heads right now. So um, I think one of the biggest thing is supply is good and demand is actually not that strong. I think that's one of the things that are suppressing crude prices right now. I'm still a bull. I think that this is just grinding a bottom out, and I don't think it's going to maintain its uh, lower bias um, in, in over, I would say, definitely the next few weeks. Hey, I, I appreciate the take, man. I got the chart up here right now, even on a weekly basis. We're talking about we just made a low, man. Pretty pretty remarkable, 72, 75. And, and as a consumer, Teddy, in terms of demand, I'll tell you, when I see these prices, right, I say, man, mm -hmm. I'm going to go fill up my gas tank, man, because $72 for the price of crude seems like a bargain in terms of a risk reward pro portfolio of where it could be. Um, pretty remarkable, the pullback we've had, though, if you're looking at that market as, as a buyer, I know you cover it in the Tiger mm -hmm. Forex report. Uh, maybe you could talk to us about some of the levels as we come down. I mean, boy, a $10 pullback, man, pretty decisive. We reached $72. Uh, is this an area that you'd be maybe potentially looking at for some buys here? Uh, you know, if you're if you're looking for that, where are you looking for on the upside? Um, talk to me maybe a little bit about some of the levels because I think it's 74 bucks risk reward. I'm not mm -hmm. a big crew trader, but as I said, as somebody that buys gas, man, 74 dollars, and I know it's not exact translation of what I'm paying at the pump, but it does matter. Boy, I see a risk reward balance that that I like mm -hmm. at 74 dollars right now. Yeah, I think you got to be a buy break scenario right now because you have to be very careful with your risk. I think that for sure that any upside potential outweighs any downside potential right now. Like I don't see crude, even if it was to break another five, six dollars, that would be a spike low. I can't see that grinding and holding down. You know, we're, we're heading into winter and we've had a pretty mild start so far. I mean, like. I'm in Chicago land, man, and it's like 40 degrees, which is beautiful the last couple of days. I mean, that nice. sounds pretty cold to you in Florida, but for the first week in December, we're usually at like, you know, I mean, the, the upper 20s, sometimes bobbling down towards zero already, you know, for the cold temperatures. So um, I'm liking it. I think that right now it's it's a, it's a tough trade without a doubt, and it's tough to be a bull, but I'm looking for it definitely to bounce back up and get above that $80 mark. You know, I think it's very, very unlikely that if it does get down and stay in these lower 70s that it's going to hold. I think it's really going to start to lift again. So nice. especially you can see with the currencies too, like right now – Oil is not having such a, such an impact, but every time oil starts to get a rally, you can see it affect the yen, and it does start to impact the currency markets. You know, and that's where I, where I think you really have to be tight. If you're a bear, keep your stops tight because if you're going to think that you're going to be in a sell rally situation right now, I think that you're going to be. I mean, the short term trend is that you know it's making lower move lows and lower move highs, but that's only on the hourly and the short term daily. If you're really looking at it in the longer term, at best we're setting up a, 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 a range trade situation for crude right now and that's where you got to be careful trying to be a bear because if it's if it's not a true bear market this is where bears start to get slaughtered over the next couple of weeks especially as we come into rollover for december and also the turning over of the year into winter time as well and could you talk to the listeners, Teddy, because you've covered it many times, and boy, this is one of the best educations I got from you early on when we started having you on many years ago, um, but in terms of crude and mm -hmm. the producers, right, and the demand and the supply, and when you look at especially the dollar versus the yen and how the U.S. is a producer, could you just go over for the listeners and the viewers real quick, for those that haven't heard it, mm -hmm. in terms of how that relationship works? Because I think just understanding the fundamentals of that market in terms of crude, the price of crude, how that impacts the dollar, and especially how it impacts a currency like the yen, um, sure. which has such a different 
part of their economy in terms of the production of crude versus uh, like us, uh, America? Okay, yeah, well, especially with Japan, that's a very good case example because um, as an ally, we also kind of guarantee Japan, meaning that they buy oil on the open market from all over the place. You know, I mean, they even buy oil from Russia, for Christ's sakes, you know. So, but the reality is we also protect them in the sense that if there's shortages or things like that, they know that they can rely on the U.S. as a supplier, you know, so or at least they have been able to in the past. So the price of crude is very indicative of where the yen can be when it's trending. And we saw a lot of that over the last year and a half where, especially because of the interest rate differential, you know, and then you had the crude oil differential also that made the yen become very, very weak, you know, because you got to remember that you're not buying oil in yen to begin with. You got to convert the cash. And then also you had the interest rate differential that slammed the yen. So your buying power also decreased. So every time crude especially would go up, that would hurt the U.S. dollar yen because, or excuse me, the yen, meaning the yen's a bear and the U.S. dollar yen would go up, you know, because that starts to add the value on the dollar side. So that's where crude oil definitely has an impact on currency markets, which then also flutters into other things because you got to remember it, Japan's a manufacturing country if they're, and oil is something that they rely on for manufacturing. So it's not just automobiles. That's only one portion of what they need oil for. They need oil because they're a mass producer of, of you know, hard goods, you know. Sure. So when you, that's why that really impacts the, the uh, Japanese yen currency, especially. It's a great breakdown, man, and it makes so much sense when you break it down like that. You know, the price is going up. We're selling it. They're buying it. Of course, it's going to translate into it. And then you just go down the rabbit hole of the, you know, effects and impacts that that right. can have down the line on the economies and the currencies and yields, et cetera, as we're all seeing. Uh, what do you want to jump to next, Teddy, in terms of currencies? I know we got, you know, all the currencies kind of just mm -hmm. pulling back dramatically from the moves we've had. Sure. You got the euro at 105, man. Um, you got the dollar index basically at 105. Um, you want to talk about the euro, the dollar? Where, where do you want to jump sure. to? Um, well, the euro and the pound are the ones that are the strongest in the dollar index. Now, the dollar index hit a nice spike low on Monday. So Monday and Tuesday, the dollar was strong. Obviously, today it's coming back. Now, one of the reasons I think it's coming back also is that it's kind of a profit-taking break right now. You have to realize that the, the interest rate market was uh, much lower earlier today and overnight and then they started a rally this morning as we opened up our markets so that's kind of hitting the dollar you know and i think it's more of a profit taking move i would key off of the of the low in the dollar index from monday if that low gets taken out well that's obviously bearish because you're making new lows um that's intuitively obvious but i nice. think right now that's a good pivot point that is if we hold above that, you know, if we don't break through that today and, and instead a new low, I would be very cautious trying to sell against the dollar. I think what you're seeing is a profit taking move. We're heading into the Fed meeting. It's unlikely that we're not going to see a rally in the dollar over the next few sessions. Teddy, I appreciate the education, folks. You heard it right there. Check out the Tiger Forex report, folks. Absolutely great. Teddy, I appreciate Thanks, the Thomas. time, man. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. Take care. Okay, man. Have a great one. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back to finish up the show.